And to bring us more details on the latest developments that have been taking place between India and Pakistan, I'm now joined in by Mr. Vivek Kaju, former Indian ambassador to Afghanistan and retired Major General K.K. Sinha, defense expert, who also joins us live from New Delhi. Let's, let me actually start with uh, Major General K.K. Sinha, who's also joining us. Uh, sir, how do you view Pakistan's position at the moment? <coughs> because uh, if we actually look at what happened yesterday, the armed forces have exposed Pakistan's lie. It was yesterday at the meet that our armed forces presented evidence of the wreckage of the F-16 that was used by, United, uh, by, by, by Pakistan, which has, of course, been a violation of its contract with the United States. Do you see any ramifications of this action? Uh, Makansha, the ramifications are huge. You must understand. And um, the India has played this thing very, very well. You see, first thing, you know, F-16 has been brought down by Meg Bison. And uh, in the forward trajectory, what you have seen, you know, the wing commander has gone in their side. Um, you know, bringing down F-16 and especially the um, MRAM missile they, which they, they have used, the side you know, air-to-air -air missile, and this is only an F-16, and it violates, and in the same go, what we have done it, we have brought in Americans on the mat. See, the point is like this, you know, we see that, you know, diplomatically it is going, but at the same time, when you are putting a pressure with the evidence of, you know, F-16 being right. used, is a huge violation. So India, you know, it, it was given, it, it was a, actually a word when Bush has given this, you know, the, um, the Bush Jr. has given this F-16 to Pakistan that it will never be used. And that time they told a lie that the Pakistan do not have the nuclear capability because F-16, you know, when they have given in for, you know, using it against the anti-terror operations, which they have said, and that time, you know, they have to give a certificate that you know Pakistan is a non-nuclear country so everything you know it is when you are giving it is a huge huge in state craft on which we have used it and you use it very well now you see the ball is in two court one is the Pakistan is totally on the mat and in the mat in that you know whatever the national objective we have set in it is on the process of getting implemented our whole doctrine of um, and I can call it, you know, a Modi doctrine is playing so well that we have taken the leadership on the fight against the terrorism in the world. Once in a one stroke, we have able to do it. And if you know the Anjaba top on which we have hit in the area of Balkot, even the American wanted to do that. But they were not able to do it when we have reached over there and thousand, you know, kg bomb coming into that area. You know, the whole area gets devastated. So, some of the people are asking what happened. So, we have just changed the whole narrative and taken the lead um, as a nation that uh, we are against the terrorism. And Absolutely. this lead, I think the whole world is going to follow us. Very rightly said, uh, Major General, that we have changed the narrative. Let me also bring in uh, Ambassador Kadju on this. This is a very valid point that you have stated, and I completely agree with you. But Ambassador Kadju, um, we've also heard the U.S. calling on global communities to actually follow Washington's lead in designating Jesh e Mohammed as a terrorist organization. And yesterday's um, evidence has also exposed Pakistan's lie. But do you think this is enough to reduce America's dependability on Pakistan, especially when it comes to their, to you know, Pakistan bringing in the Taliban to the talking table. Look, uh, I look at these things soberly, and through the prism of my diplomatic experience. Yes, I think the Balakot aerial action was correct, and Mr. Modi deserves credit for taking it or or ordering it. But we should not have unrealistic expectations of what will follow from our present gains. We made gains, but let us be sober about these gains. My first point, I doubt whether the American-Pakistan defense relationship, such as it exists today, will be impacted by the use of the F-16s. It may be contrary to the contract they had signed, but 
or the assurances that they have given, but there are economic and financial interests of American companies. Right. And in America, business is everything. That has been my experience. So they will find a way of continuing the supplies, etc. If we think that this will end American support for the F-16s, we will be mistaken. That Very is right. point one. Point two. I think we've sent a signal to the world that things are changing, that our strategic patience is at an end. Therefore, there will be pressure on Pakistan. But does that mean, and I'm coming to the question that you had raised, does that mean that America will put such pressure that it will be willing to cut off ties with Pakistan? No. America needs, as you rightly pointed out, it needs Pakistan in the Afghan context. Point three, Pakistan wanted to de-escalate, but I don't see any desire on our part to escalate. And that was wise on our part. We had made a point and we then stood back. Pakistan countered it. We were effective in recountering what Pakistan threw at us. But let us not forget that Pakistan countered it. Hmm. So these things will now have to be assessed not through the prism of jubilation, but to, through the prism of, and I'm sure my military colleague on the panel will agree with me, that in army headquarters and air headquarters and the Ministry of External Affairs and the National Security Council Secretariat, the events starting from Pulmama mm. will be evaluate and analyzed, evaluated, dissected to draw appropriate lessons without mm. any feeling of triumphalism, etc. That is how professionals behave. Now, I'm keeping politics apart. We are in a political season. Elections are coming. So we should not get carried away by these things as former professionals. My colleague also is a professional. So we have made an achievement. Now let us assess what is that achievement and then proceed further. The, our object has to be the end of Pakistani terror. And we will have to see how our present action will contribute to that. Right, Ambassador, I very, very valid that point that you are making. Absolutely, that we cannot lose our lose track and lose sight of the main objective, which remains to actually completely remove and get rid of terrorism, especially emanating from the Pakistani soil. Uh, Major General K.K. Sinha, what are you, what are your views now that? Pakistan's lies have been exposed. Do you think that Wing Commander Abhinandan has been used as a tool for psychological warfare, taking into consideration that videos from the time his his plane crashed have have been constantly been pouring in from Pakistan, and they have actually been broadcast on YouTube. Um, Akansha, you must understand, uh, you know, these are the things which has a short-lived thing and, uh, you know, the Pakistan is uh, hiding behind that is a goodwill gesture and which is uh, we very clearly and very firmly, you know, you, you heard the military people coming and telling that we are not going to allow them to hide behind that. You see, the India, you know, I respect uh, Ambassador Kardju, he's a very seasoned you know, uh, diplomat. Um, his views are absolutely correct, but mind you, I like to tell through you that there is a huge difference and the huge thing is changing. See, it is the first time we have able to establish that the India is not going to stop at short of it what the, has been a rhetoric. The Pakistan has always been saying that you can't cross over our airspace or in our territory. We have given a loud and clear deep inside in their western front. From eastern side, we have gone right up to the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa area. And, and then we reserve this to do it again. The, this is a sept, huge paradigm shift in the strategy and we have to understand. See when you know on statecraft and the military craft and the military and diplomacy when takes place this has got a synergetic effect on ground. The second thing is that you know the nuclear bogey that you know Pakistan has been, all been saying that has been demolished, totally demolished. So the option whether it is American, Russian, uh, Israelis, anyone, the, if they have got that option, what we see, 
all over the world. That option at one stage in the mind of the people and the world that India is falling short of that. That has to be demolished. And that was the achievements are. You know, these things doesn't happen in by one stroke of things happening. But you will see when you reserve of reacting, what happens if tomorrow something happened like Pulamama? So the Pakistan knows and if India remains short of that, what we did it after the surgical strike, then we will lose out this you know, advantage which we have gained. So India is changed and I hope that India should remain changed. And, you know, if we are not able to sort out, you know, with diplomatically or militarily or by national actions last 30 years. But the things looking up and we should do it. You know, Pakistan will like, like to have the window. The Pakistan is trying to get a window to Absolutely. hide behind that. We should give them a space. Right. And I am not, we have, must give them space because in the Pakistan, and I believe, the kid that there are, you know, there are people, there are, you know, who are sensible people. Pakistan military has also a professionalism. I have served with them in, you know, international environment. And I know hmm. my, my, my commander was a I Pakistani. Think, I think so even they have, see, there is a lobby. Yeah. Major General Sina, um, yeah. Ambassador Karju would, I think, like to share his thoughts on what you are saying. Ambassador Karju, please go ahead. No, I entirely agree with General Sina that... Uh, we have sent a clear signal to the world that we will get our conventional forces in which we have superiority right. into play if a terrorist attack emanates from Pakistan of such magnitude that, is that it is unacceptable to us. Clearly, the Pulwama attack was in this category. And this marks a radical departure from our defensive approach in the past. The world will undoubtedly take note of it. All that I'm saying is that it is too early for us to assess the full ramifications of this step that we have taken. We will have to carefully assess how do we weave this step in, this new posture that we have. And I'm applauding this posture. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm all for this posture and I'm applauding it. All that I'm saying is that the full consequences of our step will have to be evaluated by us. Of course, it will be evaluated by the Pakistanis as by the international community. My right. one other, two other points, very short. All right, sir. I think uh, in making these assessments, we will be guided by our sobriety. The second, the Abhinandan release hmm. is a welcome step. Hmm. I think his coming back will be a matter of relief and joy, not only to his family, not only to the Air Force, but to all of us. Our son is coming back to us. What can be a matter of greater joy? And I do think that the Pakistanis, if they tried to create, take advantage of this by all these videos, which of course, ironically, also showed to us that he was there and in, in Despite his injuries, he was maintaining a stoicism, which is in the finest traditions of the Indian Defence Forces. But we should not be distracted by this. We should not take this as, you know, a final achievement. That final achievement will only come, and I agree with General Sinha, that it will not come through Absolutely. one step, but that final achievement will come. This is not the final achievement, and we completely yes, when roger that. Yes, terror ends. We completely roger that. And also, do you see this as a diplomatic victory for India at the moment and, and something that has actually deflected India's attention or, or the global attention from the whole issue of terrorism? Because let's not forget that ever since Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan announced this decision, there has been a global support. He's been lauded as a hero who's, who's taken the step towards peace. Look, uh, diplomats and governments view these things calmly, they don't get exuberant. They see positives and negatives on all sides. They've naturally seen that Imran Khan, who is under some pressure from his people, because we know popular sentiments in Pakistan, has taken a step, I'm sure with the agreement of the army and of the army chief, to release 
uh, Abhinandan as soon as possible. So that is something which would, they would have noted. They would also have noted that we ourselves were very, very careful and correctly careful in our articulation after the surgical strikes. Uh, sorry, after this, not only the surgical strike, but after the Bala hmm. attack. So they would have seen that India too is behaving with extreme responsibility and restraint. Point three, they would now notice, and this is important, that India's strategic patience is at an end. And they, it is willing to use its conventional forces, as I said. And that will have the advantage of the international community, especially the principal powers, and right. perhaps the Chinese, in warning the Pakistanis that, look, after 30 years, the Indians have acted. Acted purposefully, acted on your soil. And we can't, don't feel that their action is unjustified. In many quarters, I can share with you, they used to wonder, how long will you take this? Hmm. How long will you be defensive? So today they understand that after all these decades, if India has finally said enough is enough, and we will take action even if Pakistan has nuclear weapons, then the pressure will be on Pakistan to end this. That will clearly this succeed? is pressure. One last thing. Will this succeed? There's a question mark there. Hmm. Let us not forget that the Americans have lost 2,500 soldiers in Afghanistan because of Pakistani support to the Taliban. And therefore, the Pakistanis are adept at playing this game. And today, after playing that game, the Americans are talking to the Taliban. So, we have to be careful. We've got to assess the situation and then proceed forward. Even while I'm uploading, I use that mm -hmm. word again, uploading this action, I'm saying that let us not be in a very triumphal mood. Let right. us be calm and sober and assess. That is all that I'm saying. There is plenty to wait and watch at the moment. I completely agree with you, Ambassador Karju. And as you rightly mentioned and lauded the efforts of the Indian Air Force and what happened in Balakot, of course, as I agree with uh, Major General Sinha also, has, has marked a paradigm shift in India's defense strategy and was much needed to establish the fact that Pakistan cannot get away with murder. And for those who still have doubts about how India has registered a tactical win here, just look at our record. This is the first time that the release of an Indian soldier from Pakistan has been secured in less than 48 hours. In 1999, it took India eight days to secure the release of K. Nachiketa.